it seems to be the case that there are a number of relatively high profile people who we typically think of as Republicans, um, but who might well not be. Uh, it's hard to say at this point who is and who isn't. Um, they're, they're coming out saying to one degree or another that they will not support President Trump's reelection efforts. And this is always an interesting thing, right? When people who should be faithful due to party allegiance aren't. And we saw a fair amount of this in 2016, right? When it was easy to kind of write Donald Trump off, um, thinking that he had no chance of winning the office, which, you know, it's hard to remember back four years ago, but that was the prevailing wisdom four years ago. Right. Was that he, he was a placeholder and some other Republican would be by four years hence to challenge Hillary Clinton. It didn't quite go that way, as we all know now in, in retrospect. And the New York Times ran with a story, I believe it was yesterday, uh, claiming that George W. Bush would not be supporting Trump's reelection. And that wow. uh, that's, a, that's a little surprising, right? And that Mitt Romney wouldn't either. That's not surprising. Uh, you could see that one coming a mile away. And then beyond that article, there are a number of high profile generals, right, who have come out swinging against Trump just lately. Uh, first, we had um, Mattis, then there's Flynn, and Colin Powell is in the news today saying he won't vote for, for Trump either. He went a step further and said he'd be voting for Biden. Um, Mitt Romney uh, is saying things like, I might write in my wife, which is apparently what he did last time. <laughs> And, and and business like this, but you you've got a number of people here, and I should I should say that George W. Bush's spokesman came out and said he never said any such thing, and this is made up by the New York Times. So we'll put all of the links in the show notes, and you figure it out for yourselves. But you're starting to see this movement on the part of certain elements of the Republican Party walking away from President Trump. And what surprises me is that it's happening now. It seems more reasonable this would have happened earlier on when there was at least some possibility that the Republicans could field an alternate candidate. Yeah, no, they're they're looking at the general at this point and thinking, okay, we can take a chunk out of him right now. And Biden, for his part, hasn't really said much. And one of his spokesmen said, that they're going to get the Republicans for Biden approach off the ground in in a couple of months, right? He's solidifying his Democratic base, but then he's going to start trying to appeal to Republicans. And I wonder what happens when he starts doing that, because that's going to give a lot of people something to think about. Now, I think it's difficult to imagine Joe Biden appealing to Republican faithful like long-term GOP voters. But I don't think it's that hard for him to to be making a pitch to people who are on that fence. He could probably come up with something that will get just enough of them thinking about it. And really, he doesn't have to move a lot of people. He's just got to move, I don't know, what, 10, 12% of the Republican, typical Republican voters over to his side, and he'll win in a landslide. Right, because this is just how electoral math works. But I wonder I wonder if there's some element within the Republican Party, there may be a similar element within the Democratic Party, that actually doesn't want to win this election. I think, I think the that, next yep. the next four years are gonna be horrible for whichever party is in the White House. Yeah, I, I I do think there are a number of people like that. And then there's also in a related uh, note there are a number of people who think if we make things much, much worse, they can get better quicker. And I don't really subscribe to that line of thinking. I think, you know, you've got limited time to get things right and to solve the problems we have. And frankly, I think we're already way past that point. So, yep. you know, I, I don't I don't put a lot of stock in that sort of political thinking, but I understand it. And I think there are a number of people who are on that ship, too. Um, but I think the, the real... The really interesting thing here is, will Joe Biden be able to uh, say anything to attract Republican voters? He's got a long record that would indicate he's going to have a lot of problems with that. And yet, that's going to be part of his strategy, and we already see chinks in the armor on the Republican side. And 
And, you know, Colin Powell came out and said, I will support Joe Biden. And Donald Trump immediately insults him on Twitter. Wow. Immediately. And, you know, look, (laughs) say what you will about Colin Powell. He is one of the most respected men in the United States of America. Yep. And if, yep. if you in, if you insult him publicly, th- that reflects poorly on you, not him, yep. because he's going to remain above that kind of crap all the time. Um, look, look, I have mixed feelings about Powell too. his involvement in the, the Iraq adventure. You know, I don't really know where I come down on him personally, but he's an eminently respectable human being. Yep. And when you insult him, you diminish yourself. Right. It's one thing to disagree with somebody. It's another to insult him personally. And I think this sort of behavior, while it plays to Trump's most rabid base, is just alienating everyone else day after miserable day. So uh, we'll see where this all goes. But I'm starting to think that that it's not going to go well. But it's Donald funny Trump. you phrase it that way of playing to his rabid base and alien, alienating everyone else because from my perspective, that's very much what lost Hillary the election the last time around. She was yeah. she was appealing when, to her rabid base, and, and people in the middle were just getting turned off. Right, and and when she referred to Donald Trump voters as deplorables, yep, right, you know that that didn't resonate all that well with a bunch of people who thought, hey, she's talking about me.